Hey everyone, John from Nintendo Life here, and today we're reviewing Undermine for Nintendo Switch. This review was originally written by the wonderful Mitch Vogel for NintendoLife.com and was adapted to video by me. Anyway, let's go! <laughs> By this point in time, the roguelike genre has become positively saturated in the modern indie scene, spurred on no doubt by key success stories like Dead Cells in the last few years. This can be both a good thing and a bad thing. On one hand, fans of the genre are spoiled for choice when looking for another game to get into, but this also means it's that much harder for new entries to stand out from the pack. In this respect, Undermine does struggle to differentiate itself. However, it more than makes up for a lack of originality by demonstrating a strong awareness of what makes this genre great. This is a fun game through and through and absolutely nails its gameplay loop. Undermine takes place in a kingdom being ravaged by earthquakes, which all seem to be originating from a mysterious mine. To deal with the problem, the king opts to utilize the bottomless supply of bodies that makes up the kingdom's peasantry by throwing these peasants into the mine one at a time in the hopes that someone will solve the problem. As the player, this means you'll take control of a new peasant every single time you run through the dungeon. When they inevitably die, all their upgrades and remaining gold get passed on to the next poor sod to get sent in. It's quite the humorous take on the repetitive structure of a roguelike, and the writing keeps the overall tone similarly light-hearted. For example, the obituary for one of our first dead characters, killed by a fly, highlighted they were survived by 16 children, all of whom were pointed out to also be peasants. Each run sees your new peasant dropped into a randomly generated dungeon that bears more than a passing resemblance to those found in the old Legend of Zelda games or Binding of Isaac. You're equipped with a pickaxe which you can either swing or throw like a short distance boomerang, and the goal is simply to move from room to room in the hopes of finding a staircase that'll take you down to the next floor. Along the way, each room is usually patrolled by a mixture of monsters and cave-dwelling wildlife, which you of course have to dispatch, resulting in gold or other goodies being dropped. Things get a bit more interesting when you factor in the relics you can find on each floor, each of which grants you special extra boons for the remainder of the run. None of the relics we've found so far prove to be truly game-breaking, but they each represent a noticeable leap or function that rarely goes unappreciated. Getting boots that prevent you from falling into pits, for example, seems like a lame upgrade, but it can massively improve your survivability in most rooms. Unlike many of its genre peers, Undermine manages to give you a nice sort of power trip each run. Relics are consistently reliable and always feel like a big step up for you. Going right along with this, Undermine also uses a robust, persistent upgrade system that calls to mind one of the best parts of Rogue Legacy. After each death, your peasant drops around half their gold, while the remainder is passed on to the next peasant who can spend it in the hub. Here you're given a brief respite before jumping back into the dungeon, where you can buy items to give you a bit of an edge, or you can invest them and gradually price your upgrades to things like health and damage output. Though the jumps are relatively small with these upgrades, they nonetheless begin to add up quickly over time. It becomes nigh impossible to not be tempted to go back in for one more run to test these things out. It's incredibly addictive. Repetition over the course of many runs, then, is neatly sidestepped. For example, you're prone to come across a blueprint every now and then. These can be taken back to the blacksmith to get a brand new item, which has a chance of appearing in future runs. You also eventually progress far enough to find wholly new areas on deeper floors with their own sets of enemies, traps, and unlockables. You can even unlock shortcuts to get to these places even faster on subsequent runs. It feels like you find something new or interesting on just about every single run. This greatly incentivizes you to keep pushing on, unveil more secrets, and just see how far you can make it this time around. All this is backed by a 32-bit art style that's masterfully executed. Environments are rife with all sorts of fine details, like the somewhat warped real-time reflections of objects near pools of water, and the sprite work and animation is full of expression. Pixel art may be seen as kind of trite these days, but it's abundantly clear that the developers were anything but lazy in this direction. The only downside is that the general underground aesthetic slightly dampens the visual diversity of each area, but this really is a nitpick. So if you think by looking at it that Undermine seems derivative of past greats in the genre, you're right. Undermine's greatest weakness is that it doesn't really present any brand new ideas or concepts you haven't seen before. However, what it does offer is spades of refinement. This is an experience that consistently demonstrates a careful understanding of what past games achieved and how they achieved them and how to improve upon them. There's no jank to be found in the controls or performance, no undercooked ideas that throw off the gameplay loop, no elements that feel awkwardly included. Everything here is purposefully designed and thoughtfully implemented, which makes for an overall harmonic experience that few games manage to pull off. In short, Undermine is an exquisitely well-polished game, to a degree that's almost shocking. Undermine is ridiculously easy to recommend. 
If you're a fan of roguelike games, you owe it to yourself to pick this one up. Undermine demonstrates a clear mastery of its overall design, controls, upgrade systems, and presentation, which all come together to make for a thoroughly engrossing experience. The one caveat, if you're sick of roguelikes, this won't change anything for you. If you fall into that camp, it's best to take a pass. Otherwise, Undermine comes with a high recommendation. This is absolutely worth your time. We here at Nintendo Life give Undermine a 9 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching, and for a lot more Switch reviews, check out NintendoLife.com. But until then, throw some peasants into that subscribe button, and we'll catch you next time. Bye everyone! Oh,